as per usual, the pups haven't done anything playing to get today at all, ever at all. Until right now, for some reason, I'm not showing that we're live yet. It says waiting. Well, they'll be here. So, ATD time, ATD time. <laughs> How's your Wednesday going? Ours is going pretty swell. I'm working in cramped quarters because I do too many things at one time. It's okay. Let me know if you guys can hear Jeff. Because I have the mic and he doesn't have the mic. Y'all are welcome for the serenade. The serenadra. So, um, here's what's happening. I watched Rhonda's live feed last night, and it was pretty fun. There were foils involved. If you guys don't watch RK3's lives and you are into um, faux finishes, countertops, etc., then I don't know what you're doing. But um, I was watching, and I was like, I want to do a river with some foils. Can you guys hear that? That like sound, that means your um, adhesive is tacky enough. So what I'm using tonight is the APS foil adhesive. I have a link down in the description, I hope. Um, if not, let me know. Uh, it really, you're spilling. It really helps the channel. Um, when you guys use our links and it just helps us all the way around. So, uh, yeah, the foil that I have is from APS and the adhesive that I'm using is from APS artistic painting studio. And so I really like this abalone shell looking one. Ooh, ah, I'm not sure which side is which, so we're going to have to do a little roadside. Nope. Yep. And so what I'm going to do is I've gone ahead and done the, um, I need all of these things. That's why it's still here. I've gone ahead and just, um, a cradle board that's not cradled is just solid. And I just dusted it white in some areas. And that's so that my foils look brighter because if you look at this foil, it is very translucent. You can see all the way through it. So I don't want to lose some of the awesome look by it being just on a brown background. So I just dusted some white spray paint matte um, over it. And can you see the sheen of the adhesive that I brushed on there? It's a very rough brush. I just did it with a foam brush. You can use whatever brush floats your boat. Just be advised that whatever kind of brush you use is going to leave a different kind of texture and that texture will um, kind of be present. My little fingerprints left little marks. I'm trying to cover that up. Um, whatever texture you sweep on is going to show. So just be advised about that. Right. So. Let us, I just thought about this. I haven't like really made my way through the whole scheme of it in my head. I just decided I wanted to do it. And then, so now I'm doing it. I didn't think my way through this. That's all I'm saying. It's common for me though. So I'm trying to cut a kind of a ziggy zag into my foil. Also, I've forgotten what side is sticky. Okay. And that is so I don't end up with some weird funky edge, even though 
Um, it wouldn't matter if it was because I'm going to make it into a river table that just has this um, design on it. I should have, I think I'm going to. Okay, so I'm going to crinkle this and that is going to give me a textured design. When you crinkle your oils, it makes it easier to hide seams when you do this and to hide any kind of folds that end up in your um, piece. I prefer. I would consider it a pro tip. So I'm going to put that there. And what I'm trying to do is essentially just have something down for the clear resin that I'm going to put on here. I'm going to put some clear so that you can kind of see the um, river of foil that we're putting down. And I'm using a rough bristle brush. I thought I could do this with like a brayer and it would work. Turns out um, I was very wrong. And you need a brush like this to make your foil stick properly. And I'm kind of just dabbing out these edges in hopes that it won't leave a hard line. Like I said, I decided to do this four minutes ago. Ready for the reveal? Ready? Do I want to see how it kind of didn't do anything here? That's because I didn't brush any of my adhesive there, so it's just not going to stick in that area. Maybe that's it. Oh, there you go. So I didn't want a solid area. I just want parts of it. I'm just adding a little bit more to other sticky areas. Well, I thought I was, but apparently I was doing that on the wrong side. <laughs> hate it when that happens. As you can see, I'm kind of just like brushing it and I'm letting it kind of just have that sweeping look. I'm sorry I'm not reading the chat right now. Okay. Oh, she did? Probably a tag. You can see on here, like, there's some areas that are, like, in the brown part that has the foil. And in my opinion, it doesn't look as long, but... You know, my opinion isn't everything, and if that is a look that you guys like, then roll on with it, people. I have a lot of areas that just, that would make just a fun peacock. Can you even, will you turn the light on that? I don't think you can see how awesome this stuff looks. It looks kind of deadpan on camera. looks like a very orchestrated oil spill. That's kind of what I'm going with because the um, everything I'm going to put around it is going to be uh, purple. So I have my main like area of um, design and I just want other little peekaboo areas that could just pop through. I put just roughed it up in a lot of the areas. I didn't do full coverage. I just want to have something there in case that's where the design takes us. And since I didn't put the 
Um, see how I just, was I in camera when I did that? That swirl look, so it's kind of in a rounder um, design. Just keep that in mind when you're applying this stuff. How you apply it matters. But this is um, just a loose interpretation of what I have in my head, so it doesn't matter to me. Because I think resin's gonna resin no matter what I do. And I like the random look. I had another foil out that I was gonna try to use, but I don't know if I'm going to. But I'll get y'all's opinion in a moment. And I have tested this to see if, I have not. I've tested it to see if um, this adhesive messes with the resin, and it does not. It doesn't make it fisheye or anything like that. So if you have an area that doesn't end up getting covered, it's fine. Ideally, you wouldn't be able to feel any tack once you have your foil down. So if you feel some, then you may want to wait just a little bit and then add like put the foil back down. Well, I'm just doing this little area up here and then I'm done with this part. Jeff was nice enough to do it on his thing. Jeff was nice enough to um, go ahead and prep my resin for me while I was doing that. Just so you know, this is what our base looks like right now. I know, it's crazy. It's crazy right now, but you just give me a minute, okay? Sometimes you just never know. Do I want to add any of this one? Or do you think it's going to be too loud? I'm trying to find a spot on the edge I can just show you what it looks like. Yeah, it'll be like way much. Because it's, it's, a, it's a lot. Yeah, better. it's... Very much bolder. Mm -mm. Well, it's not see-through at all. But I need a little something else in a couple areas. So let's do maybe this one. It's a little bit dotty. Because I'm out of the one I just had. Are you trying to cover the whole thing? No. I'm just trying to give some depth. Yep. I'm just trying to give a little bit of depth. And it's not going to stick everywhere because I already have it mostly covered with the other foil. Apparently, Canvas is mad at me for not paying attention. I swear. Like, what is the problem? Oh, well. I'm done. I'm over it. This is already going to be awesome. I don't need all that jazz. Okay. So, my sweet, sweet husband has gone ahead and mostly mixed up my this. Mostly. Yeah, I can still see swirls of resin in here. It's not mixed. I let that sit, and I did it, and I did it, and I did it, and then I hand mixed it. Okay. You okay, see? well, I mixed, I mixed it as much as I could. I believe you. I'm just saying. I just got to mix it up just a little bit more. Have you ever done resin floors with alcohol ink? Um, be careful using alcohol ink with resin because it's not light fast slash color fast, it's going to fade um, if you drop alcohol ink into your resin. If you're putting it under the resin, it could still dilute over time. So just watch out for that. But um, I've done alcohol ink countertops. I haven't done an alcohol ink floor. 
Okay. So I'm going to be using a mica tonight. I know, I know, I don't ever use micas. But today, we got time. So I'm going to do a white, a Milky Way, purple, and a gold. Possibly a spearmint. You guys let me know if you're digging the spearmint idea. Okay. So we're going to do... Couple of whites. Maybe not. I think I'm gonna do should I do mostly purple or mostly white? Um you know what they say. Hmm. Go with what your purple says. That that doesn't make a lick of sense. All right, so I know for sure I'm going to use some old gold. This is from Color Passion. It is very much like 007. It's just a little bit of a deeper gold. It's not as, um, I don't even know the word, electric, vivid, not sure, but one of those. And for my powders, I always overload them. A lot of people say it's wasteful. It is completely up to you how much pigment you use, but if you don't put enough, it could dilute and kind of fade out. And so I really overload mine to make them more, I guess, thick. I don't know. In my head, they, the powders just stick to themselves better when there's a lot of powder. But I don't know if that's an actual science or an e-science, but that's the science. And it's a beautiful color. Now, I'm going to be using deep purple. This one's a mica. I also carry it in a paste. And it is a beautifully rich. Remember that royal purple we used to carry by that's Artisu? A, that's a really nice purple right there. That's a good. It's got that cherry yeah, red like, shimmer to it. Like a very royalty, like the queen's favorite purple. Right. That is a great way to mention it. The queen's favorite purple. So did you say if I should make it mostly purple or mostly white? What do you guys think? Purples and some whites. Oh, babe, you didn't even use one of Oh, she had issues with fish eyes? That's not good. I need some pink. We'll see. There's, there's not really any pink in the um, something, the foil that we put down. You know what I didn't do that I always recommend people do when they work with a powder is to make it into a slurry before you mix it into your resin, but I failed. What that does, it just kind of pre-melts your, um, it doesn't melt your micas, but it decreases the odds of you getting those like chunks of mica that don't quite um, break down into your resin. I say breakdown. I, I'm using it as a loose term. Hey, will you tell me if I'm on camera? Rolling things all out. I just, I need, I'm trying to get things in. I just need this stuff. I don't need it clean. Okay, so I'm going to make just a little bit of spearmint just in case. There's a lag. How yummy is this color? Oh, that's a shimmer spearmint. Yeah, it's like it's like breakfast at Tiffany's, but a lighter shade, and then with like a pearl. In my head, it's gonna go well, but I don't want to like cartoon up my vision, which I tend to do. This is gonna look nice. I think you're just a teeny tiny bit. Right, just the ever so slightest yeah. slight bit of it. The thing I like about paste is that they mix into resin so easily. And you can get all these colors that I'm using at artiststilldeath.com. So nice. Okay. Boop, boop. Um, did we say if we should do mostly purples? Hey, Angie. Um, Angela, which uh, pigment were you looking for? 
white with purple and spearmint. Oh, that's, I like that, Brittany. What's up, Sue? Bubblegum pink. Yeah, that would look good too. Okay. So I know for sure I'm going to mix in some, I'm out of my big stir stick, so we'll just use this one. We're going to use some Milky Way or Shooting Star. It goes by two names, but it is still one beautiful color. It looks chunky, but it's not that bad. And I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to use a lot, but there we go with a lot. Um, and it melts in super easily. I didn't want to do a lot because I just wanted a little bit of sparkle. I didn't want it to be like a hazy or cloudy color, which it looks like it may be. So I may have to cut it with a little bit more resin. Yeah. But that's okay. Not a problem. It's like a rainbow of glitter. I get real close into the camera when it's like fuzzied out. Okay. Oh yeah, it's raining here too. Mostly purples. Okay, we're gonna do mostly purples. What are you talking about? He said it's raining here too. It's been raining here. It was 66 degrees today. Okay, we're going to do mostly purples. Of course, Donna. If, huh, yeah, I'm going to. I asked, and the people have spoken. And then I'm just I'm just gonna do the white just in this thing thing. And for the white, I am using a base cell white from Color Passion. I didn't let this resin rest at all, but should we get cells, this is the reason. I gotta go another stir stick. We're down to do a floor. What's up, Gail? Fort Hood where? I don't, I'm sorry. I think I'm going to start with just a translucent white. Hey, Christy, you did make a live. Whoop, whoop. Bowie. I'm down to come do a floor with you guys. Thank you, Bowie. That's enough. You're just missed, son. Whew. Killeen, Texas. That's not far from here at all. Okay, so just to recap, we have Just Resin Spearmint. It is a pearlescent, shimmery, powdery breakfast at Tiffany's, but Wait, pearl. Y'all thought, what is it, spearmint? This is or spearmint. Breakfast at Tiffany's, like... Mm -hmm. They look good in person, or like on camera, this looks way better in person. Mm -hmm. This the is the Milky Way or Shooting Star from Resin Art. Again, you can get all these brands in one convenient place. That is my website, artiststilldeath.com. And this is Deep Purple by Just Resin. This is the powder version, but we do carry the paste version. We got two of those. Boop, boop. This is Color Passion Rich Gold. Nope, old gold, sorry. It is a floating gold. When you hit it with heat, a lot of the particles come up to the surface. It's pretty cool, which I'll show you. And then this is the Color Passion Base Cell White. So what I'm gonna start with is, what I should have started with is making sure this table is level I am almost 100% sure it is not, but whatever. Hey, B, I think it looks cool. like maybe it, I wish it just read better on camera. It just looks like dirt. Um, 
So what I'm going to start with is putting the translucent Milky Way in the areas that I want to make sure that this foil shows through. And so wherever you want a river of this look, I would recommend putting your clear there. And that's just going to kind of protect it from other resin getting to that area. Now, I used way too much Milky Way, so it's kind of hiding some of that awesome look. So I'm going to kind of relief it a little bit, take some of it up. And if you put it like the clear or the Milky Way in an area and then you're like, well, I wish I'd actually covered that area up, you can still do that. You can just add resin over that bit that has an opaque color to it and then it's an easy fix. Now, in my head originally, I was just going to do a river of color that was the foil. And then I got just extra with it. No one's surprised. Okay. And so now I'm going to make it an art piece instead of like a faux finish, I think. But I want to do heavy purple that kind of frames the foil in a bit. For me, I always try to do thick areas of color, thick bands of color because in my head with my work I feel like the thinner the bands of color the busier it is and I like more of a simple elegant look with my pieces so it's it's not looking like much right now but just, just give me a minute I promise you that it's gonna maybe be something awesome I can't guarantee it because you know what? Resin's going to resin. Look how opaque this purple is. You don't even see any of the brown of the board through that area. If Tudor was here, he'd be like, hey, you know what you should do? The Italian drip. And I think he does that because he knows I'm not good at the Italian drip. Almost looks like a funky planet or a different kind of zebra stripe. I have a little bit of this purple left. I'm going to fill it in down here. I'm using Stone Coat Art Coat, and I should have a link down in the description box for you guys to get 15% off with my code. This resin, you can work, we worked it up to three hours before, but generally you can get a good two hours out of it for sure. Now, what do I think I want to do? It's going to be awesome. I just have to figure out what's happening. I don't know what you're doing. I am making an art piece. Ah, ah, I see. Using resin and foils. And it's going to be amazing. Sometimes it just takes a couple seconds for it to realize how amazing it can be. That's hip hop. So I think I'm going to add the white maybe on the inside of the purple in some areas. Not sure if I'm digging it, but we're gonna figure it out together. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up doing a swipe to like ombre this in a little bit. Cause that's usually my MO. So I don't wanna add a lot of this gold because it will take over. It will float, it will get into everything. Just, just know that it's going to. 
So I'm going to actually just put very thin little accent lines so that when I swipe through it, you're going to see little parts of the gold, but it's not going to be wild because it will get wild. This is all just prep work for what I'm ultimately trying to do. Thank you, Shannon. Okay, so I don't want to do a lot of this aqua, right? Did, is that what we said? I don't know what this is. Okay. I'm going to go get my so wipey papers, and then we're going to see if I made a mess or if I made magic. Color passion what? What's up, Kim? How are you? Sorry I haven't responded to your text yet. Things have been wild here. Okay, I'm going to hit with just a little bit of heat. I don't want to do too much heat because I don't want to liquefy my resin and have it just go where it wants to. I want it to roughly stay where I put it. So I'm just, at this moment, just making sure it's fluid. Okay, 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 okay. All right, here we go. What's up, Jerry? Okay, so I'm just going to kind of blend things together using a swiping paper. If you've never seen me do a swipe, I lay my paper down horizontally and I only let about a pinky's width of pigment come in contact with my paper so that it doesn't just scrape everything off. Do not go in vertical like this. You're just gonna scrape everything. Additionally, if you move too fast, you are gonna create skips. And then you're gonna message me and wonder what happened. Making sure I give some movement. And I wanted to come over into my river of, um, I guess, abalone, so that it starts to peekaboo through a little bit. When Jeff used to do resin with me, he had a, if all else fails, super tilt motto. And I think mine is pretty much, if all else fails, do a swipe. I think everybody has things that consistently work for them. That they're, that's their go-to. What's y'all's go-to? I just want a little bit of the purple just ghosted over. Okay. All right. I'm giving it some scallops, some movement with my swipes. By design, you don't have to do that. That's just what I like to do. I'll let that paper sit there for a little too long and it kind of took my resin up. And so it's got to fill that in. 54 people and 14 thumbs. We can do better than that, right? We can do better than that. Um, yeah, you, this could be a tabletop. Tabletop. Tabletop in the house. Words are hard, okay? It's also important to make sure you don't have any bare spots that don't have resin because that's going to interrupt the flow of your swipes. Yeah, that, uh, the, the, what do you call it? It's not taking over as much as I thought it would. The gold? No, the, well, both. Like, I think it's like, like it's perfect. 
All right, so I'm gonna swipe through the top of this now. Wherever you lay your swiping paper is gonna be what color is on the top of your swipe. And you don't even have to have um, multiple colors to do a swipe. Like I'm putting it all in the purple right here. It's a nice little blending technique too. Definitely a super good blending technique. Makes it look organic. Mm -hmm. I'm making sure I have my swiping paper in a bunch of the colors. A bunch of them. There are only a few. Hmm. I don't like covering up so much of that purple. I think I kind of like it a little bit more. Um, no, that looks great. Babe. Broken. It'll move. Like it'll move. Like don't worry about it. It looks. Hmm. Find yourself a, fan, a Jeff. Like, putting it down like that and now it's like smoothly coming together like it's I like it. it looks great everybody loves it you have to kind of in my okay so my approach to resin is put resin down roughly in the design ish that you're kind of going for and then just see what the resin is doing and then resin's gonna resin Resin is going to resin. So if you work with what it wants to do anyways, then I think you'll end up with a more successful piece. That's just my opinion. Who am I? So somebody asked, um, what's the craziest thing you've resined? I haven't done too many crazy things. Um, we've been in crazy situations with resin. We haven't resin crazy things like doing resin on a rooftop in july in austin that was yeah. crazy was bananas <clears throat> in 10 degree weather probably 120 on a rooftop rooftop all right after i get all this swiped in i'm going to add um more stark lines with the, like the gold, I think. So I don't know what the craziest thing we've resined is. Because you really can't do too much with resin because it I mean resin has limitations it, yeah like it just it will fall off mm -hmm. yeah, with some heat and see where we're at This, I'm just trying to pop some bubbles. See what all floaters I have. If I have any hairs I need to pull. I know it's kind of gross with no light on it. I'm not going to tilt just yet. I think I want to add some hard lines. What do you guys think about that idea? Like, not thick lines, just like accent veins. Thoughts? Mm -hmm. So let's do, I'm going to do a hard line on this one so the way i pull a, a good strong vein is i'll get a whole bunch of resin on my stir stick just get a good old scoop of it and then i have that drizzle coming off 
of the stir stick. So I'm going to scoop up a good drizzle and wait for it to get have a good flow. Start off the piece. And don't hesitate. Go all the way down. If you hesitate, you're going to get that. Is that a little dubby? That little squiggly line. Yep. So ready? I'm going to go for it. You said keep it low, right? I didn't, but yes, keep yeah, it low. Keep it low. The lower, the straighter it'll be. The, yeah, when you're higher up, you're higher it's up, it more likely to spin. swirl. Yeah. Very true. I'm just going along, paralleling the designs that I already have in there. More aqua? I was thinking that. All right, more aqua. How do you keep it from blob blobbing doing that? Um, so, by blobbing, or, okay, I will demo the um, what it looks like when you pull a vein the wrong way at the end of this video. I'll just do a whole demo on um, what it looks like if you hesitate and et cetera. Some little bald spots. We got them. Got them. Okay, so where should we put the aqua? It's like it's all disappeared. Mm -hmm. So a little oopsie boopsie. Oopsie, boopsie. Yeah, little boop boop boops. Okay, now I want some more aqua here, but I don't want to go all the way. So I just wait for it to start to drip and then pull it up right before it's going to do that. That takes a little bit of practice though. The faster you move, theoretically, the thinner your line will be. <clears throat> and if you want a line that's in the middle of some place, but you can't let it blob off to one side, damn it, it's fine because you can just take a little bit of swiping paper, take the corner of it. You can dip swipe. You could. And just trail it. Yes, like that. I still feel like it needs something. It needs something. I mean, I still like how it looks, but. There's a couple of hairs in here. <laughs> Watch out with your stupid face with that hairbrush. Okay. I don't know where the stick went. I just dropped a cup of resin and it landed bottom down. So if that's not a good omen for 2024, I don't know what is. Need to always have swipe paper. I always have swipe paper somewhere near me.
So if you want to tilt while using this method with the peekaboos, you can. It's just going to give your flow a better, more even look. Just You just have to pay attention to how far you're tilting because you have to tilt it back to that area. And essentially, <clears throat> this resin is rolling over the clear that we put down first. And so it's not going to stick there. And like you can see like it's just going over that little spot. Mm -hmm. That looks funny like. Just a little peekaboo. And if you need an area to move faster because everything's getting to where it needs to be sooner, just hit that area with a little bit more heat. What you're doing is thinning out that part specifically. So it's gonna move faster than the other areas. I like the way it looks when it has this. It does look like a planet. I like what it looks like when there's that, that shift, that definite shadow because one color goes over the other. If I was working on a longer piece, I would have done the river that I had in my brain. But since it's round, why not? Yeah, I'm super into the peekaboos too. What's up, Tabitha? How are you? Um, oh my God. what I thought it was. So it's mud back there? Yeah, but it's mostly dried mud. I'll get it, just give me a second. Yeah, so I'll get it. Let's worry about it after the live, okay? You guys, I just dropped an entire thing of mud onto the floor near the dust-free zone. It's because I'm talented. I like it. I like the slight peekabooness to it. I like that it looks a little bit planetary. Mud, yes. Um, so my amazing husband got me a ceramic um, pottery wheel for throwing um, because it's something I super love to do. And I can't just put mud. Yeah, it's very messy. And I can't just put mud into our pipes. This building is 100 years old, 200 years old, 1,000 years old. And so um, I have a couple of, I have a little bit of resin left. I'm going to do a couple coasters. Um, it's super messy. And I can't put the mud down the drain, so I have to just dry it out and then I can throw it away. That way it doesn't mess with any of the pipes. Actually, let's just do a set of mushes. So I have to dry it out before I can throw it away. So but that takes a lot longer in the winter, colder, drier months like we are in right now in Texas. So, yeah. We all throw in ceramics in an apartment. Not ideal, but it's cards I'm dealt, and I love ceramics, so I'm going to deal with it. So what I'm going to do is a smush. If you guys have never seen a smush happen... This is how it starts. Usually I have just a whole bunch of overflow resin on the surface of my piece. I mean, surface of my, this, what is this, table? 
but I don't in this case. So I'm just adding it all down and then I'm going to take a coaster. This is one of our MDF coasters is not one of the clear ones. I'm using all opaque colors, so there's not really a point in doing the clear. I'm just gonna smush that in. And see what we end up with. It's almost like Christmas every time. I don't mind that. I wish I could kind of control the look. You know what I mean? Typically, you should save um, some of your colors for when it gets starts to get muddy. You can just put an accent color just back over the top of it. Make sure. You have to squash it that much. Well, I need to make You're sure it comes it out. Of, well, I need to make sure it comes out of all the directions. I need to make sure it comes out everywhere so it has full coverage. So I don't have to go back in and like bloop, bloop, bloop. I super love that spearmint color. Yeah, it needed more gold for sure. Oh, that's going to be on the bottom. I didn't let it smush all the way. So what you can do is tap it in and then tilt it. Tap it in or leave it, or you can re-smush it. Typically, I just tap in whatever is missing and then tilt it around a little bit so that the design, the flow, what works. Is this? this is the Stone Coat Countertop Art Coat. Let's see if we can get more of the gold to show up. I will also scrape to get colors in. <gasps> kind of twisted as I was pulling it up. So it has a little bit of that design. Happy New Year, Evelyn. Evelyn, I don't know if you heard Jeff, but you said Happy New Year. I don't know because you don't have a mic on, so I don't know. I want to do one that's just on purpose. So I accidentally got some of the purple, deep purple into my white here. And I think it's going to end up looking slightly marbly because it's just got that little faint hint of the purple, which looks apparently black when it's on a white background. I'm just going to kind of work in a little bit more of the purple. I know it looks sloppy, I know it looks messy, but this is how to get a very rustic, natural looking marble background, in my opinion. And who am I, honestly? But if you just put a little bit of a color and then tilt it around, if you're able to tilt, that's the best way to get something marbly looking without breaking your brain. I'm trying to tilt so that it doesn't have just that open void in the center. You can also just tap it, tap it away. Oop. Voila, marble. 
but I think I want to do like a vein of the aqua and the gold. And just very simple swipe. But I'm trying to be careful with this because I don't want to swipe too much of the background because you'll be able to see. But we can always tilt it. So it's not hugely detrimental. I'm just trying to soften it. Okay. And then drag some lines out. I don't ever want to have a vein or anything like that running through the center of my piece, so I always offset it. I like that. What do you guys think? Ugh. It's just, I almost just died a little bit. Okay. So I have one coasty left. Let's put the rest of our aqua down. I say aqua, it's spearmint. It's very spearminty. And then the rest of our essentially marbled white. There are some people that have forward thought enough to put colors in a specific area to create a specific design once you pull your coaster up. I don't have that, so this is what I do. Um, and it works, works for me. Love a swirl. So easy, so nice. And then I sell these bad boys for $5 a piece. And that's just with leftover resin. I think it's important to utilize as much of everything as you can. And if you're using some of our patented stir sticks, just take an alcohol rag and wipe them off after you use them. And they're good to go to do your next piece without being wasteful. Those popsicle sticks are not much more than one use, in my opinion, for what I've used them. No shade on popsicle sticks at all. I just like to save money and a little bit of the environment since we're working with resin. It's the least we can do, right? Right. Uh, we can cut custom coaster shapes. I have someone asking for dragonflies. There is a minimum order quantity. Just shoot me a message through the website and I will let you guys know if it's a shape that we can cut. Um, so I'm going to show you guys the pieces from today in case you missed them. Here's the coasters. The aqua color is spearmint from Just Resin. The purple color is deep purple from Just Resin. The white is color passion base cell white. The gold is color passion old gold. 
And then the sparkle is the um, Milky Way or Shooting Star from Resin Art. And the foil is, I think, abalone, some form of abalone from APS. And I also use the APS adhesive. Additionally, I'm using Stone Coat Art Coat Epoxy for the long, beautiful working time to do this piece. I have a code down in the description box for um, Stone Coat Countertops Epoxy, as well as um, everything else, the pigments, came from artiststilldeath.com along with the sticks and the coasters. You guys want to see the mess I made? It makes me want um, ice cream. What kind of ice cream is that? Like a pralines and cream. Anyways, I hope you guys have had an awesome, awesome day. I hope you learned something. We're entertained or inspired in some way. I got to take these pups out and clean up my mud mess. Oh, I didn't even see if you guys had any more questions. If I missed any, um, shoot me a message at my website, artistilldeath.com. Shoot me an email, thornton at artistilldeath.com. Um, we try to do at least 24 for a custom order, if that's cool with you guys, because we have to create the design. But shoot me a message on our website, and we will see you guys tomorrow. But till then, be kind to one another, because you never know what someone's going through. And always remember, we do the test. So you don't have to. And I hope to see you guys at our next live at 6 p.m. every day, except for Tuesdays. It's at 2 p.m. during the week. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.